So back to the sales market, we have for the moment a healthy and somewhat sustainable pace in the New York City market as compared to other markets in other parts of the country that have a somewhat frenzied nature, lots of multiple bids, lots of things go, going over ask. Here we are still somewhat of a buyer's market, but in some pockets definitely slanted towards sellers. And we're seeing that sort of equilibrium start to shift more towards the sell side for sure. When you look at the quarter one results year over year, there was a significant uptick, but again, it's very difficult to look at this year and compare it to last year when you consider that we were in fact shut down for you know 13 or 14 weeks. There were a record number of contracts signed in the first quarter over 36, 3700. March was one of the most active months of March that we've seen in over 14 years. So some of the areas with greatest opportunities, new developments, some of the larger and luxury product, great opportunity for buyers. We saw the most activity in the market in the under $3 million range. In fact, well over 80% of transactions in the first quarter were that under $3 million range. As we see the vaccination rollouts continue to progress, more openings, you have restaurants, you have Broadway, offices are starting to formulate some idea of when they may be coming back. I've been talking to various clients and some of them, their offices are already saying they're coming back early September, but it's still a little early to tell, but there's a greater clarity that perhaps we won't all be working from home forever and there'll be some sort of distributed or flexible working scenarios. So as people have more clarity over whether or not they're going to have to be in the office and how often, plus, We've been at home for a year and we've learned a lot more about what we need and how space works for us. So people are making much more informed decisions in terms of the space that they need, home office, you know, outdoor space, space for home workouts. All of these decisions and all of these trends are really informing decisions that people are making right now to buy, perhaps for the first time transitioning from renters to owners, or upsizing, whether it's because you have been at home in your smaller New York City apartment for the better part of the year, or perhaps you decamped to a second home and now you've adjusted to having that space and you need multiple home offices and you need spaces for homeschooling, etc., etc. If you've been following my weekly sort of uh, market notes and observations on things that are happening in the market, you may have noted that I commented and shared on my social profiles about some of the activity and the continued great activity in the luxury market. This was the 11th week of continued 30 or more contracts signed above the $4 million price point. It is very interesting to note that I believe in week 10, uh, Donna Olshan in her report was noting that there were 51 signed contracts above $4 million. And that's especially notable because during the entirety of the shutdown, which was approximately 13 weeks, there were barely 51 signed contracts above 4 million in all of the 13 weeks. And as an additional point, there was a low point during the 13 week shutdown where there were only 31 contracts signed in all of the Manhattan market. So, you know, the activity continues. I have been running around three boroughs with clients, running around Manhattan, and Brooklyn and in Long Island City, working with buyers, looking at new developments, putting you know, negotiating on various things. And the activity and the sense of urgency is definitely there. Interest rates remain low. The stock market is still currently quite robust. 
and people have more clarity and they're much more positive and they are continuing to write what I've been calling this love letter to New York City where they are committing to this new iteration and the opportunity that exists here. So now I'll conclude my little spiel of the day with, again, don't bet against New York City. This city is one of the most resilient cities in the world. I was born and raised in Manhattan. I did not leave during the pandemic. And it has been really amazing to see the city emerging from its cocoon. So come join us. If you have any questions about the market, please subscribe below. So you can send, you can shoot me a text, you can shoot me an email anytime. I'm happy to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about what all of this can mean for you and where the opportunity lies to take a bite out of the Big Apple. Stay safe and be well.